Hey, what's going on YouTube? EXO coming at you with the update from the show video. A lot of people wondering what happened at the base competition, but to tell you the truth, what didn't happen at the base competition? Uh, lots of stuff kind of went wrong left and right. Uh, I, pretty much this video is going to tell you a little bit about that and kind of bring you through the day as well as show you the actual clips from the day. So it uh, started out me already kind of being PO'd from burning my finger on the damn toaster, <laughs> cooking up some peanut butter toast. I was just like, bah, you son of a bitch. So uh, that already had me partially PO'd. So as you can tell, you know, I was hungry and had to get the hell out of here. So I could head down to Derek's house. So uh, I rode down 95, had to go down uh, south about 70 miles. Only paid about five bucks in tolls. Only paid, right? Damn, five bucks in tolls. But uh, still, it was a good trip down to my buddy Derek's house. Here is the some footage that I got just before the base competition at Derek's house. Just having a good old time. Food on the grill, dogs on the patio. Hey, what's going on, brother? Nice environment for a good chill sesh. He's doing backflips. Oh my word, he's doing backflips. Oh, that was great. Pretty cool, huh? All the ladies representing with the bass addiction. Soundstream SPLX. Slam dunking and then trunking. Definitely a thumbs up on that one. See, that was a good time, right? Just hanging out with a fellow bass head over at his house, checking out his wife's ride with that little daisy port SPLX from Soundstream. Gotta love it. So, um, yeah, just showing support where it's needed there. So, the next place we were gonna go there was I was gonna follow a buddy named Jeff who has four Alpine Type R's. Yes, I have a video of that too, hitting uh, the music class. I think he was doing the 260. I don't remember what he was doing for the class and the music, but I do have it on film. And so, I was following him. We take a left into the parking lot. There's already some people there, so I'll show you that right now when we first arrive. So, this is when we first arrive to the show, right here. All right, pulling up. I already see there's plenty of people over there. I'll zoom in a little bit. Sorry for the shakiness. So then we get there a little bit, you know, I roam around and start playing my stereo system a little bit, just on very low volume. So by this point, it's getting a little darker outside, a little bit cooler in temperature, and I figured it was about time for me to do my run. So I'll go ahead and hand out my camera to my buddy One Loud Mofo. You've probably seen his video, the reason why any of you know about this. I had a good laugh about that myself. I'm all excited, you know, I'm freaking bobbing my head, getting ready to go into the lanes, getting my freaking young Jeezy ready to play. About 15 seconds into my run, my score is freaking devastatingly low. But it's no big deal, no big deal. I was like, oh, I don't even care. Oh, just not a good day. Freaking depressed, the shit's broken. Oh, got coke all over my seat and I'm sitting in it. I don't even care anymore. My ass is soaked and all syrupy. It's all right though. We love it. We love it. It's no good. <laughs> but regardless, I still took first place in the class that I was in. I think I was like the only person in that class. Ugh, so that's okay though. <laughs> it's kind of funny though. And uh, so, you know, r regardless, it ended up being a shitty day in the lanes. Just um, the competition before this, all sanctioned events, I got a 153 decibels at 42 hertz, um, sealed up on the dash. Um, that was still with just two amps. And then still with two amps, that same day, I did a, um, again a 153 in the kick with the door open. Um, at 41 hertz. And a lot of you think that I blew a coil. <laughs> I didn't blow a coil at the show. I'll actually explain even more of the coil situation right now and try to stay with the timeline as best as you can. So, Triple X are delivered to my door rudimentarily. I already make a mistake. I don't check every single one of the coils on the subs. Didn't do that. Already huge mistake. Always check your voice calls when you first get your sub. First, one big mistake. Let's put that right down here somewhere on the screen. First big mistake. Second big mistake, I did not inspect thoroughly the mechanics of the subwoofer. The, the surround, the spiders, the, the, the basket, how to see if anything wiggled, to see if anything was out of line or anything was, you know, kind of fishy. That's two errors right there. Bam! So we're in a situation pretty good now. We got the subs um, ready to be installed the first time over a year ago. The way that the voice coils are set up on the triple X's are so as to be positive, positive, negative, negative. But on the other side, you'd think it would still be positive, positive, negative, negative, but it's not. It's actually negative, negative, positive, positive. And in my mind, I thought that obviously I would wire the two middle coils being, being, being the ones that you would wire in series, in series. 
but I was actually wrong. Basically, what I was doing was wiring in series the wrong coil. And it was reading out the same, the impedance was same, but I think it was out of phase and it was battling, the subwoofers were battling each other. And that whole time I was blaring on my subwoofers for over a year, they might have been wired wrong. So when I took them out and realized that a coil was blown, that coil might have been blown months and months ago. Completely on my fault. The Soundstream Triple X's are still my favorite sub. We all make mistakes. Check this out, you guys. This is going to be a great lesson for everybody to learn who's ever switched from a lower to a higher impedance um, due to something that they can't control, such as blowing a coil. So they have to make do with what they have. So as you know, I have eight voice coils all together, four and four. Well, seeing as though I already had blown one on one sub, I had to kind of run just what I could. So at the time, I brought it down to half ohm. Two coils on one, two coils on the other. I was really happy with the way it sounded. It sounded freaking great. I got a little excited on the volume knob one day doing a bass video, making my seat flex for you guys. It's actually going to be uploaded onto YouTube not too long here. But my toothbrushes were all flexing and my cell phone was flexing real good. And on the higher note, I kind of went down to the bass boost. Yes, I know. I know. I know. Ugh. I went down to the bass boost and I cranked it just for that one more clip on friggin' YouTube. And that one clip sent smoke out of my box and it was no good. It was completely dirty power, disgusting clip signal. That's why the subs didn't like it. I was already bumping like 30 minutes prior. So they they took a shit. Just that one toil, well, just a, like uh, another coil took the shit. So I was like, F Now I only have two coils on one sub and three coils on the other sub. So what I did was I took one coil from the le upper left hand side of the sub and a coil from the upper and the, and the other from the upper left hand side of the sub and wire those together to each individual amp at 1.2 ohms. And um, so I, I, I obviously noticed a sig significant volume decrease um, and it, it wasn't making me happy. So what did I do? The first thing I freaking do again. Oh, Exo, you stupid mother um, I turned up the bass again. I wasn't happy. I was like, what the f***? I was just so loud. Then, then I went into my bass, went into my loudness, went into my sound retriever. I was like, clickety click, click, click that mother f***. You know, shit happens. You know, we all make mistakes. Even I have told people like that. Don't have your bass settings on. Don't do it. But I was just being a flub dubulous and I wanted to get louder with the with a way that doesn't get you louder. It only promotes problems. And that's exactly what happened. And look where I am right now. So if I can help you guys whatsoever with saying don't turn up that sound retriever, the loudness, the bass, the uh, friggin' maximizer, friggin' whatever they call it, you guys, don't use it. Try to go flat on your EQ and just go from your gains on your amplifier and uh, just tune it up from your head unit so you get maximum pre-out and maximum gain. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm gonna do next time. That's what I'm gonna do next time. Fuck sucks! Okay, so the time has come for me to leave. Then I remember I have no brake lights. One of my pilot lights is out, and I'm a, and I'm the most conspicuous vehicle on the road. I have an ugly wood paneled van with tons of speakers and blue lights flashing everywhere. So I knew I might have some trouble on the way home, which I did. The Massachusetts cop is really cool. He asked me where I was going. I showed him the pamphlet of the show, the information of the show. He's like, all right, yeah, no problem. Just get your ass home as soon as you can. So I, I get going down 95. So everything's great. I'm friggin' happy as all hell. I'm on 95 straight shot deal in my house, or so I think. Hit a big bump. Next thing I know, I hear clunk, clunk, clunk going down the road. I'm like, what the f is that? Sounds like my muffler fell off. Well, guess what? It did. And it was friggin' hanging 10 feet behind me, friggin' dragged by like one more clamp. So I'm like, oh my f word. I get out, plug it back into the hole, strap it up with some gorilla tape and some uh, one of my shirts, and uh, and I think it's gonna be okay, right? So I think. Get back in the car, 20 miles down the road, obviously pitch black outside because the show got done at like 11 or, or past that. I looked down at my lap and realized something's missing. I'm missing something really important. What do you think that is? My freaking wallet. When I got out to fix my muffler the first time, I dropped my wallet that was sitting on my damn lap. So I have no ID, no insurance, no money. I had like $85 on me and I'm over, you know, like 75 miles away from my house going on the highway, a toll road. So if I get, if they ask me for my license or registration when I can't give them the friggin' money for the $2 toll, guess what, I'm screwed. So the stadies will be all over my ass. So I had to get off the highway as soon as possible. Literally had to like go to the top of a mountain just to get my cell phone to get reception so I could make a call to see if I could get some help. 
couldn't get reception, couldn't get GPS. I was on Route 111 so long, just went all the way to the coast, realized that I went the wrong way. I had to turn around, try to find Route 1 in Exeter, and in the heat of all that, I get pulled over again in Exeter. This time I'm friggin' pissed, right? I, I didn't even know what to do. I thought I was gonna get caught, and uh, you know, I, I had some stuff in the vehicle that I probably shouldn't have had, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I'm kind of nervous. I'm, I'm nervous as all f out, right? So I'm, I'm waiting for the cop to come up. And, um, and you know, he's, he's also really understanding because I'm not from the state. Told him the same situation. Let him look at the muffler. Told him that my wallet fell off when I went to go get my muffler. Please, you know, help me out here. What can you do? And so he gave me a little, a little something, like a little letter. Not a letter, but like a uh, saying this, blah, blah, blah to get him home. Basically like a little, I don't know what it was, but he had his name on it and where he was from. It, it, it was an actual little card of an officer card. So it, it helped me get home. So I'm going up Route 1, just about to break it into Portsmouth, New Hampshire, almost on the border of Maine. And you wouldn't f***ing believe it, guys. I get pulled over again, almost in Maine. I'm right on the border of Maine and I get pulled over again. I was just, I was just, I was baffled by this. Like, I, I didn't even know what to do. He looks in, he's like, what the fuck? You know, he didn't even know what to expect. So, um, I mean, he, he didn't expect that at all. So, um, you, you know, he let me go, obviously. I didn't get a ticket the whole night. So that's one thing that turned good. But I guess, you know, it, it, it was just bad in the moment because I was just so nervous, scared, fed up with it, frustrated. I just wanted to get home, it was late. I ended up getting home at 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh my god, so, you know, it was just no good. But at least I got a good hair trick out of the competition show on one boy's coil, so it was pretty sweet. Um, so that's basically what happened the night. Here's the clip that I got when the cop went back to his car. I just kind of did a quick little update for you guys in the van when he was checking out his stuff. Um, you know, just writing up some information. This was the only cop I really felt comfortable to be rummaging around my cabin like that, moving around and moving my hands. Because all the other cops were a little bit different, so I was like, ooh, scared shitless, just putting my hands up like this, holding them on the wheel. But this guy, he gave off a different vibe, so I felt comfortable picking stuff up and, and moving my hands around the cab. So here's, here's what I got when the cop pulled me over. All right, guys, I'm getting pulled over. This is no good. The day turned out slowly bad, but that's okay. It's not all so bad. I'm gonna either contact the, the PSI for some recones. Uh, I got my buddy Thor's hammer, who has some good connections. I might talk with him. So, all right, guys, this is EXO just explaining everything that happened. Both, you know, user error, flub dub list, EXO going stupid on the base knob. We all learn our lesson from it, but you know, switching from the half ohm to the one ohm in my mind just wasn't loud enough. So I thought I could compensate by boosting. My own fault, guys. My own fault. So I uh, hope you enjoy the couple videos that will be coming after this. So uh, again, just an update video, guys. Yeah, so talk to you later. Hey, Derek, you're fine as a passenger.